Welcome back to the post-game show presented by the Maroon Club, enhancing 23 Division I sports. Join the Maroon Club today and our player of the game. Presented by Coca-Cola, experience the Coke side of life. Here's Mike. Thanks, Gary. Coach, this one always, uh, these games always come down to a couple possessions, and right there at the end, it does, didn't seem to fall for you. Yeah, I mean, games are won or lost by uh, a couple of stops, a couple of things at the end goes down to the wire. And uh, we have to learn to uh, to win those games, those close games. We've we've been in a number of them now, and uh, and we haven't we haven't been successful in them. And uh, hopefully, uh, we'll learn from this and, and start executing better. Uh, and uh, you know, they got to tap in at the end. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it's. Uh, that's the way it goes uh, at the end. Tell me about this, this second half. It looked like you guys made a concerted effort to go back and go to the rim a little bit harder. Yeah, we did. And Paulus, I thought, did a great job with that, you know, getting to the rim and, and Isaac. And, uh, you know, I mean, one of the strengths that we have um, of our team is that we do have some depth. So when we, we went to our bench, uh, they were good. Um, you know, we just, as I said, at the end, we a couple of possessions there that we don't come up with, and, uh, and, and that's the name of the game. Coach, hang in there. We'll get it back. All right. Paul, let's come on in here. Uh, 12 points, 9 rebounds. Good to have you back after you missed Wednesday night's game as a senior. What do you say to the team? This is a, a tough one to swallow. Uh, keep your heads up. Trust the process. Trust the system. Keep working hard. We'll be, we've been through this, but you gotta, you got to keep your head up and, you know, practice hard, play hard. There's nothing you can do about it. Just got to keep moving on and, and, you know, keep your head up. Yeah, I mentioned to Coach that you guys made a, a tougher effort to go to the basket. Obviously, they had a bit of a rim protector in there, but you guys did a better job, and that seemed to open things up offensively. Yeah, absolutely. I think we got to do that more and more, especially when we have so many good shooters around us, Alex, Kyle, Jaws, EJ. You know, we got to create their stop and kick it out to them because that's going to help them out because teams are starting to press on us, press us off the line, so we got to start driving or doing something else to get the guys open. Tell me, just at the end of the game, you had a 60-54 to 54 lead, and then you kind of slowed the game down, a lot, actually, and, and took the clock really all the way down to the last second on a couple of key possessions. I mean, yeah, the emphasis was just to make them run, make them play a lot of defense, but we kind of stopped. We took that a little too, too to heart, you know what I mean? We should have just kept playing our game, but long possessions. So we got to just adjust, you know, watch film, learn from it, and move on. That's the message from a senior. Thanks for a couple minutes. Appreciate it. Thank you. Gary, back to you. Good to have you back on the sideline as we will take a look at the highlights before we get to the stats and our final word. You know, no shortage of tough games for the Leopards. That's Anna, uh, Anna Kesey uh, on the break. Transition. Gary, you know, there were three buckets as we take a look at the nice alley oop from EJ Stevens to Isaac Suffering. There were three times in the game I could count where Sacred Heart was able to score in transition. Alex Petrie with a big three from the corner. Uh, the offense has started loosening up. Lafayette really had no answer for the big guy in the middle. Spellman had a, a huge game, and uh, Jarrell was just uh, too tough to handle for the Leopards. Another nice finish there by uh, Jaworski, and then the finish by Isaac suffering on a great pass from Dylan Hastings. And uh, good ball movement here. E.J. Stevens with a couple of big buckets down the stretch. Lafayette had a six-point lead at one point, Gary. But give credit to Sacred Heart, they never gave up. This young man had a really tough game. I mean, poor Sean Hohen. Uh, but the, uh, the young freshman, uh, that was Parker, did a good job and uh, just got the ball on the rim. The last second shot by Jaworski just wouldn't go down for the Leopards. Talk about Hohen, Gary. He was your impact player. He definitely had an impact tonight. I can certainly pick them. You've got the number. <laughs> One, for, One 15. for 15. And yet, and this is what... Uh, Coach Latine is going to be thrilled with. I, I was about to say, if Lafayette could pull this thing out, I think Fran O'Hanlon would have been more thrilled with the way we won as opposed to just winning a game. It was the way we won. I think Coach Latina is going to feel the same way about his team. His leading score, his senior leader, one for 15, they still found a way to pull it out. So the Leopards lose their second in a row, and here's how the numbers shook out. The 64 Sacred Heart points on 23 field goals. They shot 39.7%. Three-pointers, they were 7 for 21, and they were 11 for 17 from the foul line. As their record goes to 4 and 6, they were led by Jarrell Spellman, who got the game-winning bucket on a tap-in, and Kenan LaRose with 15 points, Spellman with 13 rebounds in the ball game. So a double-double, and he also, by the way, had five blocks where he is among the nation's top five in that department. For Lafayette, their 62 points came on 24 field goals. They shot 34%. 6 for 31 from beyond the arc. That's not good for them. 19% and 8 for 9 
from the foul line. They were led by Isaac Suffern with a career high dozen, Justin Yul or uh, E.J. Stevens with 10, Alex Petrie with 10, and Palace Jalice with 12. Career high 11 rebounds for Lucas Jarrett, who also had six points in the game. Palace Jalice to go along with his dozen points had nine rebounds in the ball game. The Leopards now go to two and five, and up next for them, they will travel to UConn, a six o'clock game. That ball game will be played on Wednesday, and then on uh, Saturday, uh, they will take on Quinnipiac. That game is a two o'clock start. The next broadcast on the Lafayette Sports Network will be on Saturday when the women will take on Monmouth. That's a two o'clock ball game as uh, Adam Dabrowski, John, and Mike will be here to call that ball game for you. That's it today. Another heartbreaking loss for the Leopards. They lose this one by two. Thanks to the LSN crew, to John Leone, Mike Joseph, to all of you for spending time with us. I'm Gary Laubach. Good afternoon, everybody.